a ton of Resident Evil stuff happening all of a sudden. No surprise because we are in the uh, vicinity of their 25th anniversary. Resident Evil 8's coming. There's a live action Netflix series which is not really connected to the video game universe at all. There's the CG Infinite Darkness CG animated series that is connected to the video game universe. And now the live action movies are getting rebooted. We're getting a plethora of Resident Evil content and I hope it's all good, but uh, the live action stuff, I mean, it's been hit or miss. By Resident Evil terms, mostly a miss. But, some Resident Evil is better than no Resident Evil. At least I can give Capcom the credit that they're doing something with their franchises. Konami! Sorry, I had a video game company in my throat that doesn't do anything with their franchises. But today I want to focus on the live action movie reboot because we actually do have some official information, not just a bunch of rumors. And it sounds like it may be good, I still have some reservations, but it does sound much closer to the video game universe, so I'm cautiously optimistic. Cautiously. There's no exact story details yet, but it does seem that it's going to fuse elements from the original game and the second game. It's definitely going to be a mixture of story elements, and it makes me wonder if some characters are going to appear in this first movie on the side, kind of, and then get developed for a role in a future sequel. But before you do a sequel, you do have to make sure the first movie is really good on its own. What we do know about the story so far for sure is that it does take place in Raccoon City, 1998. And keep in mind, that still could mean the Spencer Mansion because the Arclay Mountains, I mean, you could really see that as an extension of Raccoon City. It's right around it. So that doesn't discount the mansion storyline, which I've been dying to see in some form. And I'll say this in exact words. It'll be telling a grounded human story about a small dying American town that feels both relatable and relevant to today's audiences. Sure. I find it kind of interesting because Raccoon City back in the day was always shown to be a small midwestern town. And over the years, via sequel, spin-offs, and more modern takes on the series, it's turned into this huge metropolis that was under construction and constantly growing. So it was a very different Raccoon City than when the series first started. So it's interesting to hear that they're calling it a small midwestern town. Looks like we may be going back to a smaller city. Let's see if that's actually how the final product turns out. But that's what's being described right now. Now whether a movie is great or just absolutely sucks has a lot to do with the production team, the people behind the scenes making it. And that's where I, I kind of don't have a whole lot of faith because essentially it's being produced by the same people behind the movies. And I'm really hoping it doesn't have that same overall feel. I want something much more horror related, much scarier than what we're used to. I'm tired of seeing the motorcycles flying in the air, slow-mo moments with explosions in the background. That doesn't really impress people anymore. Stick with something scary. It's not hard to do. That's what fans want to see out of Resident Evil. But who's directing it? The director's always going to be really important when it comes to the movie. This one's being directed by... I'm probably going to mispronounce a lot of these names, by the way. Johannes Roberts. He's responsible for movies like 47 Meters Down and The Strangers Pray at Night. Neither of these are reviewed particularly well, but I'd like to point out that at least it's a director experienced with something more horror related. And another aspect every bit as important, possibly more important than the director, is the cast. Who's playing all the characters? And they're actually from the video games. This is great, although to be fair, yes, the original movies had characters from the video games, but the way they were used, they would just like slap them in there for no reason. This might be different because they seem to be the main people in the story. So far, the cast includes the character of Chris Redfield, being played by Robbie Amell, who happens to look very similar to Stephen Amell, the guy that played Green Arrow. It turns out they're first cousins. I did not know that. Uh, I think this casting is fine. I'm not that familiar with his acting skills, but he could easily pass for the military slash stars member. And you don't have Chris without Jill Valentine, being played by Hannah Common. The only movie I think I know her from is Ant-Man and the Wasp. She was the villain there, the ghost. I liked her in that, that's alright. And of course, the illustrious Albert Wesker, so we're definitely getting the Resident Evil 1 story, if it's being done properly. And I think the casting for this one is actually pretty perfect. Tom Hopper, he's been in Black Sails, he's been in Umbrella Academy, he's a really good actor. Throw some dark sunglasses on him and he could play the part easy. They could have cut it off there and I would have been like, okay, I, I know what this movie's doing. But this is where the Resident Evil 2 elements start coming into play. Claire Redfield is in the movie, being played by Kaya Scodelario. I'm wondering if she's 
going to play some kind of side or background role, unless they're literally just taking the stories of Resident Evil 1 and 2 and just fusing it all together, I, I don't know. But it's safe to assume that Claire in the games has met the other Stars members, since she's close to her brother. She's probably visited Raccoon City multiple times, so they can still do the Spencer Mansion story and have Claire make an appearance. And Resident Evil 2 villain William Birkin, the Umbrella Scientist, is essentially responsible for the Raccoon City outbreak in Resident Evil 2. No surprise he's in here. He's always been behind the scenes with Wesker in the early days. He's being played by Neil McDonough, usually plays a good villain, so I'm glad to see him here. I also really liked him in Arrow, but he did play Bison in Street Fighter The Legend of Chun-Li. I hate that movie. There's no other way to describe it. Although it wasn't his fault. It was just a horrible representation of the Bison character. But yes, he did play that role. What really throws me for a loop is Leon. Leon S. Kennedy is in this movie. No idea how he's going to mix in, so it has to be some sort of fusion of one and two. In fact, let's throw some theories into the mix how he might work into the story. Leave me some comments down below with some ideas. I think maybe he's already a rookie working at the station, trying to become a STARS member, so that's how he kind of interacts with Chris and the others. If they do the whole mansion story and Leon's there, th that's going to be kind of weird. He's being played by, sure I'm going to mispronounce this one, Avon Jogia. I don't really know who this is. He plays a character called Berkeley in Zombieland Double Tap. I haven't seen that movie yet, so I, I can't really comment on his acting abilities, but I don't really see Leon. I don't, I don't think he really looks like him at all, so I'll have to withhold judgment on that one. But that's what we know so far about this project. It's due to release theatrically in 2021. I'm interested, cautiously, semi, kind of excited, and I'll keep reporting on it as more confirmed information comes out. But yeah, Resident Evil the movie series is getting rebooted with plans for a whole new universe of installments. Leave me your thoughts down below. I'll catch you guys later. Since you made it to the end of this video, I assume you enjoyed it, so why don't you go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any new content. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, links in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can join my Patreon or become a channel member. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.